Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gamers here to come video. We're going to be discussing The Witcher 3, primarily the resolution, at least in the eyes of CD Projekt Red. Michael Kaczynski, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly anyway, he acts as the senior art producer um, at CD Projekt Red's uh, The Witcher 3, and has been discussing the resolution and why the, the developers have been so bloody confident when it comes to all the versions of the game. Um, as you probably may know, there have been some closed events where members of the press are able to actually play the title and it's looking rather beautiful if I do say so myself. So, what have they been saying? Well, the reason they've been doing this, and I quote, is the answer is simple. We're just very confident of what we've managed to achieve. The Witcher is just simply a good game regardless of the platform. We've shown the game on all platforms in a recent preview event, and we did this to show there's little difference between 1080p and 900p in terms of the actual experience you get. The numbers are just numbers, it's the adventure and the thrill you get from playing the game which counts, he added. Now, of course, there are a couple of caveats. First of all, the Xbox One version is running at 900p currently, while the PlayStation 4 version is running at 1080p, once again, currently. Now, I have a couple of comments to make on this, and I, the reason I'm mostly covering this is because it serves as a rather interesting set piece considering recent news. Now, as you've probably heard, there have been various bits of news recently have popped up that one of the main reasons the PlayStation 4 is actually ahead in sales, at least according to uh, opinion polls and so on, is because of the resolution. In other words, customers have been citing that they've been buying the PlayStation 4 simply because of the higher resolution that it operates on. We've covered that more in the video Nilsen. It's also an article as well, so you can check that out. That's N-I-E-L-S-E-N, -E in case you're unfamiliar with the spelling. And although, obviously, the Xbox One certainly had a lot of strengths in its own um, kind of column, including brand, innovative features, and so on, better resolution was what the PS4 won out. And it's quite interesting because... We know about the whole resolution gate and so on, and some developers disagree, some developers kind of agree, and it, it's a bit of a thing. Now, if we do a basic uh, mathematics on this, and if we pull up the calculator, and I'll just do it kind of live for you guys because I'm a twit and forgot to get it ready, and it seems, seems easier. If we go 1080p times 1920, it is, of course, 2 million and 73,000, rounding it up. If we go... Uh, 1920, which as uh, I uh, 900p, which is 1600 by 900, we get of course 1.44 million. So there's obviously quite a lot of difference in terms of the number of pixels. However, and however, it's the key word. There are some things we have to remember. The first, of course, is screen size matters as well as the native resolution of the screen. What what I mean by this is that let's assume for just a second that you happen to have a 50 inch 4K screen and you're sitting fairly close to it. There's a higher probability that you're going to actually notice this than if you're, say, playing on a 24 inch 1080p screen, just simply because of, of course, how the actual TV works. But let's face it, there are more to pixels than just the number of them and this of course includes the actual quality of the pixels in other words what say is going on with the lighting what's going on with say the texture quality and the various other aspects which actually make up an image and even down to things such as anti-aliasing moving away just for a second i think it's important we don't get too off message but onto the frame rate side of things Naturally, it will be extremely interesting to see just how well the game performs in terms of the actual frame rate. In other words, can it man maintain 30 FPS? Now, personally, from what I've heard and what the developers are t telling anyone, yes, performance on both machines is pretty excellent. However, of course, we will be testing that over the next couple of days. Um, but let's face it, The Witcher 3 is such a huge game. It's probably going to be the odd area here and there which isn't so optimised or maybe a little, a few bugs here and there just simply because of the huge open world nature of the title. Despite the fact, of course, CD Projekt Red have postponed that release date just a couple of times to ensure the best quality possible. So, is there anything new here in terms of what CD Projekt Red have stating? I don't know. I mean... 
some people will swear blind they can tell the difference between 900 and 1080p. Others will say no, but in my personal opinion, you can tell, but it does depend on how close you are to the screen, the resolution that you're operating at, the uh, and by which I mean the native resolution of the screen, um, as well as, of course, the natural disparity between the two consoles. For example, uh, you can get sometimes where it'll be, just for example, on the PS3 versus an Xbox 360, sometimes it'll be like 1152 versus 720, or, as I, and, you know, by 720, and then other times on another console it'll be like, just for example, 1200 versus 720, at times 720. So, in other words, there's a very small amount of difference, just a couple of pixels, you probably can't tell. You possibly might be able to tell that there's a slightly different aspect ratio in this case, but of course, aspect ratio-wise, um, 1600 by 900 is exactly the same as 1920 by 1080. Um, and there are a few other instances in where you might be able to tell, particularly if it's starting to affect anti-aliasing and so on, obviously depending on the solution. But just generally speaking, I really think that the average person, if they're running through the game at super duper speed, is probably going to be able to tell. Um, but, you know, I think it also does depend on the title. But, of course, we will be doing a full visual analysis Let's face it, and I'm not saying this is the case, but it could be that the Xbox One version is running at 900p and has exactly the same graphical detail settings aside from that as the PS4. Or it could be that the Xbox One has slightly lower texture settings, or it could be that the PS4 has a slightly lower frame rate or something. We just don't know. And the really weird thing, of course, is because of this next generation of consoles is the Xbox One version. So the Xbox One has a slightly higher CPU performance and so on. But we say that, but we don't really know what's going on with the PS4's SDK. So by which I mean, we do know that the Xbox One does have some of that 7th core freed up, but at the same time we don't know what's going on with the PS4's SDK. So we're assuming, we are making an assumption that the PS4 still has two CPUs allocated, but of course we do know that the PS4 CPU is running at 1.6 gigahertz. It's it's a bit weird. It's a it's an odd situation. This one. Hopefully, more stuff in terms of that, the more technical side of things, will become a lot clearer at GDC. But anyway, this has been a bit of an itsy bitsy video today. I've been mostly reviewing um, a graphics card. Uh, some of you probably are aware of from reviewing the R9 290X. So most of the benchmarking, the primary benchmarking, is complete on that. Uh, and I've also been recording Resident Evil Revelations, in case you're wondering where we are regarding that. All of the Xbox One footage is finished, most of the PC, most of the PC footage is finished, uh, and we need to do the PS4 footage. We've got quite far, basically just where you're about to escape the first main location and fight, kind of like the first main boss. But, so we've got maybe, we're about 50% of the way through, is pretty much the best way of putting it. In case you're wondering why the PS4 version is behind in terms of how far we've got it, it's pretty simple. We had, to, well, basically we've been working on less manpower and hours recently just because of craziness. I've been starting a new job, for example, and it's just been kind of screwing things up. So, unfortunately, um, I can only play one version at a time. And so it just happened the Xbox One version was, well, the Xbox One was plugged in first. So, yeah, just played through that. So, hence the quick graphics comparison. But anyway, that's just a bit of a, a side update for you. Yeah, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, it's been a bit of a rambly slash weirdy one, but what have you. I'm sure you'll um, appreciate it anyway. Well, hopefully. But regarding everything else, I'm still going to be playing The Order over the next few days as well. Um... So the order is going to be played. Hopefully the graphics and uh, review, graphics card review will be up tomorrow. And over the next couple of days as well, we'll be getting Resident Evil Revelations. And basically I'm trying to brace myself because there are going to be so many games. So by that point, everything should be resolved. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.